In this tutorial, I will show you how to compute the p-value in a chi-square uh, test. And in order for us to be able to compute the p-value, we have to be given the test statistic. We have to know which type of the test we are performing, and we have to know the distribution um, of the test statistic. And in this case, it will be chi-square with uh, um, various degrees of freedom, in this case, 19. And we're going to... Uh, follow the following steps. Uh, first, we're going to draw the probability density curve. Um, here's a quick sketch of some arbitrary or some generic right skewed uh, probability density curve. And next, we will draw the region according to the type of the test. In the right tail test, we'll draw the region on the right side. In the left tail test, we'll draw the region on the left. And in a two tail test, we'll draw the region in both sides of the distribution. Then we'll label the areas and the test statistic. And finally, we'll be able to compute the p-value. So let's get started. Uh, the probability density curve of some uh, generic chi-square curve is drawn. And now let's draw the region according to the type of the test. In our case, we have the right tail test. So we're going to draw the region in the right side. So this is our region. We're going to label the areas, and the only area to label here is the p value, which is the area to the right of the test statistic. And the test statistic is given to be 30.8. So in this case, to find the p value means literally to find the probability of the chi-square variable being greater than 30.8. And this is something that you cannot find using the statistical tables. You have to use one technology or another, uh, such as TI-83 or Excel. I'm going to use uh, StatCrunch because it's uh, quite visual. So by watching me using StatCrunch, you can actually learn and understand the procedure. So let's open the chi-square calculator. We have 19 degrees of freedom. And literally all we have to do is just to set up this um, inequality. So we're looking for the area to the right of 30.8 under the probability density curve. And according to this calculations, the p-value is equal to 0 0.042. All right, so this is how we do it in the right tail test. Let's uh, try different types of tests. Uh, let's do let's do two tail test. Sure. Oh, let, let's do left tail test before we do a two tail test. All right. A left tail test test. And of course, when you need it, it's not going to show up. There you go. So in this case, we have a left tail test. So we're going to follow the steps. First step to draw a probability density curve. Second step, draw your region and label the area. So the only area to label here is P, the area to the left of the test uh, statistic, which is equal to 52.6. So, so to find the P value means to find the area to the left of 52.6 under this probability density um, curve. And we can do that by simply utilizing this uh, StatCrunch calculator. So the area to the left is this. And we're done. So this is my p-value. This is uh, a very large p-value. All right, now we're ready for a two-tailed test. And uh, when we're doing a two-tailed test with a non-symmetric distribution such as chi-square, we have to be careful because um, completing the step three, it's not immediately obvious which of the two boundaries is the represented by the test uh, statistic. So let me generate a two-tailed test here real quick. And there you go. So we're going to draw some generic probability density curve. Uh, and we're going to draw two regions. And only one of them 
is can be labeled with 24.3 and it's really hard to tell is it, if it's going to be the left one or the right one so the best thing you can do here is instead of guessing uh, you can just open your uh, whatever your calculator of choice is and try to figure out whether this quantity belongs to the left side of the spectrum or the right side of the spectrum by computing these probabilities. So we can clearly see that this quantity belongs to the left side of the spectrum, so I'm going to be labeling it uh, left side with this, and the area to the left of that is only half of P, the other half of P lives in the right side of the spectrum, and instead of figuring out what this quantity is, what we're going to do is we're going to compute um, the half of P by finding the area to the left of 24.3 and then from there we can be we can compute the entire P by multiplying that probability by um, 2. This is how we find the P value. So the area to the left of 24.3 under this probability density curve is this much and we're going to multiply this number by 2 to get the um, full p value and it is 0 0.107 all right we got it right so um p-value in a two-tailed test in a non-symmetric distribution can be one of the hardest p-values to compute but so let's practice a couple more uh, in this case um, I'm not going to draw the diagram I'm just going to walk you through the steps um, so we're going to first pick the right uh, density curve then we're going to acknowledge that we're doing a left tail test so we'll be looking for the area to the left of the test statistic which is this so left tail test and right tail test are pretty straightforward. So let's hopefully do another right tail test and then we'll do a couple two tail tests. Um, in this case we have right tail test, so finding the p-value is as easy as finding the area to the right of the given test statistic. That's all there is. And that's the p-value. So once again, the p-value in the right tail test is the area to the right of the test statistic. The p-value in the left tail test is the area to the left of the test statistic. And in a p uh, in a two-tail test, it's the area to the right or the left, depending on where your value is, multiplied by two, because a single area is only half of p. So I'm generating a problem for a two-tail test. And there you go. So to answer this one, I'm going to enter the degrees of freedom. And again, I don't know if this quantity is to the left or to the right side of the spectrum. So I'm just going to find both of these probabilities. And you see how we kind of figured out that it's to the left side of the spectrum. So this area is only half of P. And to find the full P, we're going to multiply that by 2. And the answer is 0.249 rounded up, so it's 2.50. And that's how we find the p-value. Um, let me know if you have any questions.